Happy Tuesday, everybody. <laughs> My mic wasn't on. Welcome to the Deuce and Mo podcast. We got a lot of fun to get to today after what happened last night in the NBA. Uh, we were at Dave Yeager's press conference, a new Kings head coach. That um, was fun as well. A couple hours ago. Yeah. What better way to kick off a show, though, than to talk to a guy who played, of course, for your Sacramento Kings and played the game at a high, high level. He's one of the best in the business and a rising star, a rising TV star. <laughs> he is the one and only... Doug Christie. Hey. Doug, how you doing, man? I am doing fantastic. How are you guys today? We're good, man. It's always good to catch up with you, man. It's um been a wild time, not only in the NBA, but for the Sacramento Kings. They finally got their guy. They uh, hired Dave Yeager today. And I don't know if you had a chance to watch a press conference, but one thing that stuck out to me was him referencing kind of your guys' teams with Vlade and Peja, you, Webb, Bobby Jackson, and saying that, he wants to try to recreate that bond that you guys had. He said that starts on the defensive side of the ball. What do you think about that? Well, first of all, the, the word defense sounds like uh, some beautiful music. <laughs> I, I like the way that sounds. So uh, I, I agree with him because that's where you bond. That's where the, the tough stuff is done at. That's where you gotta you, 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 you don't get glorified all the time, but you do the hard work. And that's where you have to build it together. So uh, the fact that he is kind of vibing off of that is good. That lets me know that he's, he's on, obviously on the same page as Vlade because I think that Vlade, that's what Vlade wants to bring back, the bro that, that brotherhood, that family environment. But also, you guys, while, while you hit the court, it's the, the style of basketball, the movement of the basketball, the sharing of the basketball. Then on the defensive end, like he said, there is a, there's a respect. And, and a trust that has to be formed and it starts there i agree and doug you know how people say with defensive-minded coach coaches that they actually get scared that they're just going to work on the defense i mean what do you have to say when people have to say that about a coach well you know i, I think more than anything mo when you are trying to build a team you have to especially early you have to focus on defense because practice time there, there just isn't a lot of it and if you are focused on the defense if you get it locked in really good then it's easy to kind of go back and touch it up offense you're always working on it. what do you do when you go in the gym you get up right. shots you shoot you move without the ball so you really have to pound that. So the fact that that is going to be the focus is big time. It's just do we go from a defensive coach in Malone to an offensive coach in Carl back to a defensive coach in Jaeger, but it sounds like he is the combination of both of those, and I think that if that is the case and it looks like it is the case, hats off to Vladi, another great decision. Doug, what do you think Jaeger's biggest challenge is? Uh... I think it's going to, man. Well, first of all, I think the, the biggest challenge is, is going to be creating the the system, the environment that is going to be the Kings from here on out, regardless of the, the personnel, whoever it is. Right now, Cuz is the man, and uh, it doesn't matter that as much as it is what is going to be that system going forth. That when you look at it, you close your eyes, you guys, and when you open your eyes, you go, that's Sacramento Kings basketball. I think that is the biggest piece of the puzzle because you, he had the, the big, uh, second best big man in Mark Gasol. Now he has the first best big man in DeMarcus Cousins. I, I don't think that is going to be the difficult part. I, you know, a lot of people may think I'm crazy. I, I think because we'll get on board and everything will run smoothly in that in that sense. Right, because, you know, Vlade was saying that DeMarcus is not going to be traded this season, which is really interesting because from the beginning of last season, we're hearing George Carl saying nobody's untradeable <laughs> and we're not hearing anything like that. And Jaeger and Cousins are about to meet. So you do not think that Cousins is going to be one of the biggest challenges then? No, because if, think about this, Mark. If you have DeMarcus Cousins, and he was at USA Basketball, and that environment at USA Basketball is one that, that pushes you. It's like, the, it's like the really smartest kid in the class. They get their work done easy. Well, they can do one of two things. They could help the teacher and help everyone out, or they could be a deterrent and just start mucking up. Right. Well, that's what you got in, in Cuz. And I think that if you create an environment for him that's always pushing him, always trying to figure out a way, and that's what USA Basketball is, 
uh, I think that he thrives in an environment like that. And hopefully, and I, I truly think that that's what Vladi and that's what Coach Yeager are going to create because that's what we had. We had an environment that wasn't all about the physical side of basketball. It was also about the mental side and understanding the game of basketball. And when you do that, there's, there's so much to learn that you can never just be like, oh, I got it. You always got to keep working. Doug, one, one thing that Yeager talked about today was having um... – you know, being open with players, right? Players want to understand their roles. They want to have an open line of communication with the coach. Is that something, even when you played, that's kind of what you wanted from your coach? At least, you know, you guys don't have to be best friends, but just have that open line of communication? Man, I, I'm liking him already. Yeah, <laughs> I, I dig that. I'm just, I'm just saying that is so big that you define the role for a guy. And then as you see them grasp, I'll give you guys a, a good example. <laughs> Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard comes into the NBA. What what does Coach Pop tell him? He says, I want you to be a defensive player. He gets that. Now he says, I want you to be a defensive player, but at the same time, I want you to hit this corner three. He does that. Now he says, I want you to be a defensive player. I want you to do this. And now I'm going to allow you to dribble and do these. And each time as you define those roles, it so helps not only that individual, but it helps the team because now everyone knows what is expected of them. I, I just, man, it's that is so big time. I, I just can't even stress it enough. I, ha, ha, I'm, I'm over here clapping. Yeah. <laughs> very, very well said, sir. And, and Doug, you mentioned that kind of establishing roles. You kind of had a similar experience, right, with Pat Riley when Pat's like, you, I know you, you, you could score at college. You got to play some defense in the league. Yeah, I mean, he, he told me right off the bat, you're not going to play for me. The best thing for you to do is work on something in your game. And at least, you guys, there was a line drawn in the sand, and I knew where I was at, and I knew what was expected of me. And I now what, now I can do what I want with myself, meaning that am I just going to fold? You know, am I going to work? Am I? And I chose to work my butt off and continue to progress. And I just think that it, it, it makes things so much easier when everyone knows what is expected. Now, can you step outside your role? Well, you can if you show everyone in practice and the coaches in practice and they gain trust on you that you are working on a particular aspect of your game. And then if you step out outside of it on the court and it works great, if it doesn't, then you back off of it. Those are things that it just it helps the team and it helps the morale of the players, in my opinion. Doug Christie with us here on the Deuce and Mo podcast, our second ever guest. Yeah. Our first guest was the great Jerry Reynolds, but of course you got to have Doug Christie. You got to be number us. two. I know. Sorry, hey, Doug. It's not bad. It's not bad, Mo, to be number two <laughs> behind the, the great Jerry. I'll tell you, man. I'm okay with that. All right. Exactly. You know, another thing I like about Dave Yeager. He had to deal with some crazies. And I'm not saying that all the guys in that Memphis locker room were just certifiably nuts. Right. But let's be honest, you had some extreme personalities. You had Tony Allen, you had Matt Barnes, Lance Stevenson, you know, Zach Randolph. He's tamed down a little bit. I think he can handle some uh, different types of personalities. And I think that benefits the Kings. I, I agree with you. I, one of the biggest things when I when I look at him because I, I don't know Dave uh, I have never met him and I, I don't know I've I've read and I've watched and and I kind of understand what he's about but one of the biggest things that jumps out at me you guys is his adaptability I think it was yeah. 28 different players he had last <laughs> wow. year and to keep them because a lot of times if you remember Dave on the radio I said you know I anticipate that Memphis will drop out of the playoffs because. I just thought that they would. Right. And for whatever reason, he was able to keep them in it however he did it. And th you have to adapt, adapt to the players, adapt to the style. You lose your point guard, you bring in another point guard, you lose your big man, you move people around. You, he changed from an inside game kind of to guys shooting some more threes probably than he would have anticipated at the beginning of the year. These are things that just vote well because of his, what I, I say, adaptability. So that's a, that's a big one for him. Yeah, I like that, adaptability. And, we, you know, we will see if he can adapt to this roster. We, I was watching a video, and Mike Conley was saying, you know, he's one of the great basketball minds, which I found really interesting because I think in some ways he could be underrated, but we'll have to see going into this season. But I was going to ask, with having that basketball mind, how important is that as a coach? And will he be able to adapt with this roster or will they have to make some big changes this offseason? Well, it, I think 
Well, that just depends on a couple of things. What is the style that that they are going to play? Right. Are they gonna Are they gonna try to pass and move the ball? Are they gonna put Demarcus in the post, but then also use him kind of like um, uh, Green in in Golden State, where he can handle the ball? Maybe run a a four two pick and roll. I've seen that in the playoffs. There are so many different things when you have a piece like Demarcus that you can do. It just depends on what they're going to do with that. So. Uh, I think that he can take this roster and definitely get a lot more and more consistency out of it if he stresses on the defensive end that this is how things need to be done. Uh, but, you know, at the same time with, with Vlade and maybe how they want to play, does he make some changes? That is definitely possible. I think the first thing that, that, that is solid is now we have a leader and a head coach. We had the leader in Vlade. Now he's picked his second in charge as Dave Yeager. And now the dominoes will continue to fall as he hires his assistant coaches. And then they start to figure out who is going to be on the roster. How are we going to play? Because I think ultimately, you guys, it's more along the lines of how are we going to play? And then we see, you know, what we have. Doug, one of the most popular questions we're getting right now, because we're broadcasting this on YouTube live, is if Dave Yeager, called Doug Christie and said, hey, I would love for you to be on my coaching staff. Is that something that you would consider? Done deal. <laughs> Done deal. Wow. Done and deal. Yeah, I, I would, uh, because, you know, I, I love being behind the microphone. I, I truly do. And if he doesn't, I'm totally comfortable with where I'm at. I absolutely love it. Um, the the uh, all the information that you guys have passed on to me, Guy Haberman and everyone at CSN has passed on to me, and then obviously working with Grant and Jerry, it has just been enriching. So I I truly enjoy it. But coaching is one of those things that if you have an itch, you know, um, I just turned forty six. It's something that you know it's it's in you. If it if it doesn't happen, I'm not going to totally be depressed, but at the same time, if he calls and that is something that he says, hey, this is something that, uh, you know, we, we would like you to do, I would definitely, definitely take a strong look at it. And happy belated birthday, by the way. I yeah. know your birthday was yesterday, or it was yesterday, right? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is, oh, good. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, uh, happy belated. But um, I was going to ask you, you know, even going back into coaching, I remember sitting next to you and Bobby Jackson. I think it was the first game of the season. I remember when we mm -hmm. were we were talking about someone like it might have been Ben McElmore, and, and you were just talking about teaching that, probably trying to teach him and help him to get that mentality of wanting mm -hmm. to grab the ball and go after the ball and get that rebound. Do you think, you know, that can be taught? to any player in the NBA? Or is that more of something that it's a want that these players have to want and have to have the heart to do that? Mo, I think it's a bit of both, but I, I've watched, I remember seeing Richard Jefferson in, in San Antonio and Pop was talking to him on the sideline. He was like, you got to tighten up. And, you know, I, I really relish the challenge of trying to, because you can't teach everybody the same. So, for instance, the way that I pass the message on to Ben McElmore wouldn't be the same way that I would pass it on to uh, Omri Cass. Right. Because you have to find that bridge of communication. Like, how do you get across to them? And when when I watch Pop talking to Richard Jefferson about tighten up, and then I watch Manu in the playoffs, and I see him do exactly what he was trying to get Richard Jefferson to do. Obviously, Manu did it. Richard didn't get it at that, at that particular time. So, I, I, it's, it's a little bit of both Morgan but uh, I think it has to be in them obviously and then you just have to figure out a way to to milk it out of them. Doug we talk so often about stuff like that what players have to improve on a lot of times we forget about the mental side of the game right I mean how important is that and how much did you learn from your playing days about that side you know that is probably the, the biggest part as I look at this and as I continue to study basketball you guys it, there was so much that I wish that I would have understood when I was a player and the mental side is because understand that the mental dictates what the body does. Right. So 
Are you mentally strong? Do you do the right things? Are you focused on the right things on your off time? Are you really in? Are you into this? Because for nine months, this is what has to be your life. And then when you're off that time, are you trying to further and better yourself? The mental aspect of the game of basketball is just, it is vastly overlooked. And it is, when I watch Golden State and I watch Steph Curry, I you see mental basketball because he's not the biggest, he's not the strongest. Yeah. His skill, his skill that takes mental toughness to develop a skill that he's developed because you got to understand it's like a golf swing. He's just go over it again and again and again. And that's what he's done. Now he's putting that skill that he sharpened with the mental acumen that he has about passing and cutting and reading. Man, it is absolutely big time. I'm glad you brought up Steph Curry. Um, <laughs> just watching that game last night. And even I think what told me a lot was after the game when Charles Barkley is kind of speechless when one of the greats of all time you know Shaq's up there and they don't know what to say you know you're watching that game I know you are you're seeing what mm -hmm. Steph did last night in overtime with 17 points in the overtime session what's going through your head as a former player when you're watching this guy you know it's not that I'm that I'm underplaying because it is absolutely greatness but you guys when I when I watch it he is just fundamental. It is fundamental basketball, My favorite and he has word. mastered it. Yes, he he is a he's a black belt at it. I mean, the one at the top when he not the one where he was doing all the dribbling. Which the dribbling, as I rewound it for my son, I said, "Look, this is all." He's trying to get the guy to bite and start moving. And as soon as he did, then he's going to capitalize on it. But there was one at the top of the key where he grabs the ball, he pump fakes, he comes to a jump stop, he passes the ball, he acts like he's going to cut, gets the ball yep. back, and then shoots the shot. Those are just their fundamental basketball movements. And his skill of knocking down shots is absolutely superior. It is off the charts. But how he's playing the game is how you're supposed to play the game. To be honest with you, that's, that's basketball. I yeah. mean, it, it, we, we, a lot of guys make it harder. They dribble and pound the ball and then try to come off a pick and roll. And there's a double team. Instead of moving the ball, they try to make a play. Whereas he passes and cuts and sets his guys up. As Coach Carrill uh, would say, watch the guy in front of you. He'll tell you what to do. Doug, I am so giddy right now because <laughs> you understand fundamental basketball. And that is that is something I always go to and I always talk about. I'm like, It's her go-to word. It is. I'm always like, that is some fun fundamental basketball and people will think like why the hell are you saying that morgan like shut up but no you get it you understand yeah. that fundamental basketball a beautiful jump stop a beautiful not you know a beautiful legal screen is just gorgeous stuff and we saw that gorgeous play steph curry um it was written now i i forget exactly how it went but then he ended he got up it to barnes he got it he got uh. it the ball to barnes off of a beautiful screen that whole play and i remember talking to deuce about it and he was saying hey you know like that was a you know a written out play and i was like no that was just steph curry doing yeah. his thing they drew that up but they did out. draw that up yeah. and fundamentals is, is huge in this game and i think one of the arguments you know even with a Kawhi leonard is that he is one of the best players in the game because of his fundamentals would you agree yes i i, I totally agree with you i think that that was probably a drawn up play uh Deuce, but the the key is he probably had three different reads and right one read was probably him another read was the wing another ring was the corner and then another ring uh read might have been dribbling out like steve nash and set it up again so but the fundamentals of what they do and everyone see the key there with them is everyone is doing it and that yep. just takes it to a whole nother level that's a stratosphere that is, is quite untouchable by a lot of nba teams because guys don't have what it takes to be able to do this on a consistent level and it is beautiful basketball to watch and i will say it again the fundamentals of basketball yeah absolutely so is little dougie when he's when he's practicing <laughs> is he pulling up from 35 like steph or you're saying no no you gotta watch how he dribbles, how he passes, how he reads. Well, you can take him to the water, but you can't make him drink. <laughs> so we, we go we, we go over it, and, and it is what I constantly talk about. But at the same time, that's why you have the, such a separation, you guys, and players in the NBA. Because, yeah, some people understand it. For instance, I'll take the backcourt in, 
in Toronto and I look at their struggles, Oof. but what they're doing is they're trying to dribble the ball. They're trying to yep. go into traffic instead of, uh, it would be so much better with the athleticism that DeRozan has mm. to pass the ball and then cut off because now the guys can't put their hands on you the way they could in the old days. And he would get probably a lot more easy buckets. They're, they're going to stop, um, them on the pick and roll they're going to double team it then they're forcing the situation as opposed to playing and doing what is right in front of you and that's what we see in golden state so we see layups there and we see contested jump shots and missed shots in Toronto. last week i was talking about steph curry coming back and um possibly coming off the bench was my thing and deuce was yelling at me no way he's gonna start and we saw last night he came off the bench which was really interesting for the warriors would you have expected that before the game uh, you know, with them, I would say yes, because this is the key. When I look at, at Golden State, I see San Antonio, and in San Antonio, Manu Ginobili, you've watched him do this so many times. Does he pout? Does he cry? No. It's a team. And what is the best thing for the team? The best thing for the team last night was to let Steph get warmed up and get into yep. it, let him watch it for a second, as opposed to just throwing him out there. You could do that, and he would respond – but they had been playing so well as a unit. Why do we want to break that rhythm up right now? Let's start with that rhythm and then bring him in, and then it'll be the same thing that it's always been, and that's ultimately what we saw last night. What about Scott Foster? End of the Ooh. first half, of course, Livingston's ticked off. He got hammered, no call, and, yeah, he said some things to Foster. Did you think that was a, a quick toss there by Scott Foster in a, in a playoff game? Yes, totally. I don't. I don't think that that is what you do. You got to understand if you're going to allow people to be more physical in the playoffs, physicality is going to make people more emotional mm -hmm. at the same time. So if you're going to allow me to be more physical, you're going to have to give me a little more leeway with how I'm going to respond if you knock me in my damn head. <laughs> I'm not going to probably be happy about that. So uh. yeah, you got to you. You call a technical. You walk away. You you know you have to respond. You're part. If you're going to be part of the game, you have to you can't keep your rules the same but change the rules for us and then expect us to respond the old way that we were responding this is a heightened situation the playoffs are more intense now they're being more physical you're going to have to give a little more leeway with the whistle and unfortunately he didn't do that but it played out well for Golden State because now Steve Kerr has no choice but to put Steph back in, and boy, did he ever ring the bell. That's what I was going to ask. Is Scott Foster really the MVP of last night's game? <laughs> yeah, right. Because, because of him and the whole Sean Livingston situation, I mean, that forced Steve Kerr to play Steph Curry, which they probably weren't going to. Do you think they would have lost that game if Curry wasn't in? I mean, obviously, don't look at his numbers, but I'm just saying him there mentally for the squad. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely I think that they wouldn't have won that game last night because what made the game so epic is the fact that Lillard and McCullum were were shot for shot. Yep. I mean, they were guy uh, Aminu's knocking shots yeah. down, <laughs> and then Steph just absolutely you know they're going back and forth, and Steph is hitting shots, and then all of a sudden he just takes his game to a completely <laughs> kind of like what Michael Jordan used to do, takes it to another level, and that's what made it special. But to your point, Mo, yes, if if uh, if Livingston doesn't get thrown out of the game, uh, Steve Kerr just – he stays status quo and he's comfortable with the result of playing him as many minutes as he said that he would play him. And that would have been fine, even if they would have lost because they would still win the series. But the point is he forced his hand and Steph just came in and rang, rung the bell. Draymond Green is one of my favorite players in the league because he plays with that fire and the emotion. And I look at his stat line last night. He had 21 points on nine shots. He had nine rebounds. He had five assists, four steals, and seven blocks. I mean, this Man. guy is unbelievable. He's everywhere as a second-round pick. Where do you put him? Is he one of your favorite players in the league? Yes, he is because uh, he kind of plays the way I did it. Whatever you need, I'm for the team and, and, and an emotional leader at the same time. You know what you're going to get. He's going to be gritty and grimy. He's going to go after people. He's edgy. Do you need him to bring the ball up the court? He'll do that. You assist, you do that. Knock down a three, he does that. Stick the four, he'll do that. Stick the one, he'll do that. Whatever you need, that's the ultimate team player. In his game, 
even a sense higher when Steph is out there because now not so much is put on him. He can just kind of do his thing that he does when Steph is not there, but now more pressure is put because now you have to do it. Whereas when Steph is there, it just raises it to another level. But he is just he, – he covers every part of the box score, and, and I love the way that he plays with passion because that's uh, that's what I need out of players. Come like you want to be here or otherwise – go someplace else. And how do you feel about that passion that comes out? I know some people are bothered by it like it's too much, but I, I mean, I personally like it. How do you feel about it? Well, I, I definitely, the, the passion part, I would rather have to turn the player down than to mm. try to turn them up. I, I, I dig Russell Westbrook. He's my guy. I, I'm man, go for it. And then, you know, let me talk to you and try to bring you back down a little bit because the, the NBA game, a lot of games are just one on a, on a particular night in, in February and January. And all of a sudden it's a back to back four out of five, just by your effort sometimes and if you got guys who come out and they play that way I can live with not making shots and and, and turnovers and different things if you are giving it up every single night that's what we see in Darren Collison he comes out there and we see it in, in, in him every single night you know what you're going to get from him you know what you're going to get from Draymond Green every single night I love the passion Doug it's so good for you to be on with us, man. Seriously, we truly appreciate all the time. And yeah. uh, looking forward to the game tonight with OKC and San Antonio, watching your guy Westbrook, who is completely reckless and may cost him this <laughs> series. I, I agree. I, I understand. I, I, I see that he, he needs to – you got to bridle him from time to time. And the problem with those guys, in my opinion, is they don't play basketball. They're out there hooping. And yes. there's a difference. They, they, their teammates have to learn how to play. I mean, the kid that shoots the shots in the, the from Colorado, I can't think of his name. But, I mean, someone has to work with him on a shot. He's got to hit one of the damn things. I mean, <laughs> Jiminy Christmas. So once they start playing basketball, they will be scary. How do you think that series plays out? Who do you think wins it? I think that series is going to go seven games, and I think that, San Antonio is going to get that series. Mm -hmm. I, I thought OKC initially, but uh, the longer it goes, I think I'm not worried about Westbrook in Durant. It, it's more their others. And yep. the others of San Antonio, I think, will ring the bell before the others of OKC ring the bell. Doug, we truly appreciate the time, man. And I hope Dave Yeager calls you. He's hopefully he calls you in the next few minutes. Yeah. And you are an assistant coach. You know, I love working with you. He's probably TV and radio, but seriously, I would love for you to get the opportunity to be an assistant coach with right. this team. Hey, uh, one way or the other, I'll be around. How about that? <laughs> we I, like it. I love it. Thanks, Doug. We'll talk to you soon, man. Anytime, guys. Have a good one. That's okay. a great Doug Christie joining us here on the Deuce and Mo podcast. Love that guy. I love talking basketball. Doug, Doug. He's, yes. He's the man. And you know what? You know what I realized? We both are great basketball minds the way that we love. Me, no, me. no, no, no. Me, Morgan Reagan, and um, Doug Christie are oh, great basketball minds. So, Dave Yeager, you know, if you're out there and you need me on the squad as well, oh, don't steal my bit, TV's Dave Deuce Mason. I'm pretty sure you stole that bit. So, no, Dave Yeager, you know, basketball minds, uh, me, Doug Christie, we like to connect with players. But not only that, <laughs> we really understand fundamental basketball. But seriously, Doug Thank you. No, Doug, I, I hope he gets a shot. I, I've said for a long time, I think he could help this group. I think he could help players. He understands the game. He gets it. Not only fundamentals, but like we talked about with him, the yep. mental side of the game. And that's yep. such a big part of it. And people you can't don't lose sight of that. People don't realize that, you know, if you have the right, I guess I could say teacher, but yeah, sure, coach as well, to teach you the ways of the mentality of wanting to play the game and wanting to go after the ball and everything like Doug Christie knows you can go a lot further in your NBA career. You know, the people watching us on YouTube Live right now, we thank you. I know a lot of people are mentioning the background. We got the new Deuce and Mo backdrop. And some people say, are you going to come out with shirts? One person was suggesting, I forget who it was because it jumped around. Yeah. Mo knows shirts because you know everything. Mo knows. You know what? Mo I, knows. I definitely agree with this shirt. I actually think someone's already making those shirts. So Mo knows? Yep, my mom. Oh my god. Yeah. I'm kidding. That would be great. Mo knows. Like, you know how like LeBron James used to have his witness t shirts? Just yeah. Mo knows. Like Mo knows. black with white um letters. Okay. I like it. Thank yeah. you. Hey, all right, let's talk a little bit more about last night's game. Yes. With Steph Curry. I mean, he was so ridiculous last night. Even if you hate the Golden State Warriors, you could watch that game and appreciate it. And hold on, Morgan. I know okay. you're eager to jump in and okay. talk about this. 
to me, it was a classic Joy CM, right? The jump off your couch moment, right? Joy CM. Joy CM. Yeah, Joysome. The jump off your couch moment. Uh, you're How you can long relate have with you me. Been, like practicing that. No, it's you know it's just so. I think most people know what that means. Okay. The jo Joseph Joysome. I can't even say it now. <laughs> you jump off your couch with moments like that. You remember when he hit that big three late? Of course you do. Yeah. And the Warriors bench fell. Yeah. To the ground. Yes. I swear to you. I was sitting on my couch. I did the same thing. I fell to the ground. I was just like, oh, Steph Curry, are you bleeping me? You got to be bleeping me. Wow, it's like you had the same mentality as the Golden State Warriors. Oh, my just, God. Like I, I don't blame you, though. I it, don't blame. I mean, everyone should have been jumping out of their seats, whatever the hell your acronym is, because <laughs> that was amazing. That was an amazing shot, an amazing performance. You saw this guy start off slow, though, Deuce. That's what I wanted to say. You really saw Steph Curry start off slow. You could see it in his step a little bit. But then even toward the end, even when he was slower in his step, it was still, going back to that word, yeah. fundamental basketball, where he it was like not a Euro step, but it was more like the slow step to the hoop where he knew where the defender was going to go, so he knew where he was going to have to lay it up with his right hand. Amazing basketball last I, night. We have one guy talking about how he's a little sick of Steph Curry. Oh, wow. I just feel uh, weird as a Kings fan, constantly praising our division rival. I root against them. No, it's fine for you to root against them. To me, I, I, just based on where the Kings are right now, it's not like they're going head-to-head -head with the Golden State Warriors. Like, if the Kings last night were taking on the Golden State Warriors right. in the playoffs and Steph did that, I wouldn't be like, oh, my God, Steph was so amazing. That's I'd perfect. be like, oh, this sucks so right. bad. Right. But the fact is, I'm an NBA fan. You're a big basketball fan. Yep. You played. I love watching great basketball. And when I see greatness, it doesn't matter if it's Steph Curry, if it's LeBron. Hell, if it's uh, Tony Allen went off against the Lakers sure. early, earlier this year. And I'm like, what? I just like watching fun basketball. You know, many fans around the league hate DeMarcus Cousins, but cannot, you know, look away when he has the ball and he's doing some amazing things down low. Yeah. It's the same concept. People are going to respect great basketball players. And Steph Curry's one of them. You have to respect what he did last night. And I know that guy also said, it could be jealousy, but I accept the jealousy. <laughs> it's fine. You're admitting it. You're aware you're jealous. It's okay. We're all a little jealous. We all wish we had Steph Curry. Yeah, and Steph made history today. The first ever unanimous Come NBA on. MVP, LeBron in 2013. And Shaq in 2000 fell one vote shy of that. Hmm. It went Steph Curry, Kawhi Leonard, LeBron James, Russell Westbrook, and Kevin Durant in your top five. Let's get to Draymond Green's comments after the game. Ooh. He had some things to say about those Blazers. Do I think they're done? Of course I think they're done. If I don't think they're done, then I don't know who else is going to think it. You know, it's um, we're going home with a 3-1 lead. It's up to us to close it out. You know, and I trust my teammates. You know, I tr trust our team to come out ready to go and, you know, it's and close this series out. So it's not... Of course, I think they're done. It's, it's time for us to close the series. We did what we needed to do. We came on the road and got one win. We took care of home court. Now it's time for us to do it again. All right. You have any problem with that response from Draymond Green? I was just about to say, you know what I love about it is that it's so weird with Draymond Green because that could come from another player and I might not like it. Yeah. But with Draymond Green, it's he just means it as cliche and corny as it sounds. It just comes from the freaking heart. But why give them any motivation? Like, okay, let me bring it's this not up. Motivation to him. If, if anything to him, sometimes I be, I think he believes it so much. He's just saying what he believes. And I, I agree to the extent of why give them any motivation. But at the same time, the kid can't stop. Like he's just, that's who he is. Just for the record, a couple of years back when the A's and Royals were playing in a wild card game and John Lester was on the hill and I tweeted out, hey, can't wait to see a game one of the A's and Angels and the A's collapsed. Everyone said hashtag blame deuce. It was featured in the Sacramento Bee. I know, I started that. That was so weird and then it like yeah. just kept going. So everyone started blaming me for everything. So if they end up losing, is everyone going to blame Draymond Green for jinxing the Golden State Warriors by saying that the Blazers are done? Some people would. Uh, and by the way, Draymond was uh, asked in, uh, about some other things about Portland and he guess what, Morgan? He didn't hold back. You predicted a win for tonight, and you're saying that they're done. I didn't predict that. You didn't predict it. I told you we were going to win. Are you worried at all about giving other teams bulletin board material? I wanted to get them bulletin board material. My God, Draymond! Uh, like, settle down just a little bit, gangster. Like you don't have to be gangsta. so so like. 
open after the game. And I and I totally agree. I think his adrenaline is obviously still going sometimes in these post games because we've heard Draymond say a lot of good things. We've heard him say too much, and we've seen him get too emotional. There's times where I'm sitting on my couch and I'm saying, "Stop, Draymond, just yeah. shut up." Just well, last night was a great example when he shoved. Uh, who was it earlier in that game? Was it Ed Davis earlier in the game? He, when got he the landed technical. on him. Oh, no, no, no. 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 That, that was, was right before. Of games You're, no, no. That, okay, go on. Anyway, he pushed whoever. Well, no, Gerald Henderson is who it was. He pushed him. And then later on, Luke Walton had to sprint down the court yep. to grab Draymond Green, who was complaining about something. And I was just watching it going, wait, Sean Livingston, who is not the most emotional guy on the planet. No. Like, he doesn't get technicals very often. He gets tossed in like mm -hmm. 10 seconds. Yet Draymond Green is yap, yap, yap in the entire game. Went from one official to the yeah. other to half court. And you're right. That was that was ridiculous. And someone said, Draymond, no tech green, which I disagree with because I've seen that also from other players um, like Dirk. I know he complains a lot and doesn't get the calls. It really just... Draymond's at another level. Draymond yes. was at a different level. And I really I remember seeing that last night and I hated it. I really, really hated it. What he had to say post game, I don't hate. When you really like the guy, it's... it's it's hard to hate what he says or does, but yes, there's certain times in those games where he needs to shut the hell up. Um, let's talk about Dave Yeager's press conference. We were both out yes. there today. It was good seeing our guy, Jay Ross, Aww, Jason Ross. Jason Ross, bestie. Jerry Reynolds in the building. Jerry Reynolds in the building. No, it was fun. And, you know, I said yesterday, and someone was tweeting me about this, uh, saying, like, how, this is a great hire. How can you How can you not be on board? And I said, I'm, I never said I, I, I yeah. like him. I think I'm just tempered my expectations a little bit and after hearing him talk right and watching a video that i tweet out earlier that they did a profile piece on nba tv on dave yeager yeah i like what i hear but i've heard a lot of good stuff over the years yep. and now i just want to see an action but what i hear from dave yeager and what we heard today at the press conference left me feeling pretty good about the king's newest head coach and it was even it, it was as special as seeing the chemistry between yeager and Velade you know, kind of laughing back and forth. You know, they they seem to have a connection. I it's it's really going to depend on when times get hard, where yeah. that connection goes. Again, that's what we always say it's, with anything it, with this team for a long time. Exactly, absolutely, exactly, exactly. And so, so that's why for me, like I even left excited, and I had to stop. I was like, S just stop, Morgan. Don't get too yeah. excited because you know this is what happens when something is brand new. And when you hear the coach talk about talking to Demarcus, Demarcus Cousins ended up walking. In yeah, that he room. was at the end of the press conference. At, he was there to talk to Dave. He Yeager. was there to talk to Dave Yeager. At the end and you know he, Dave Yeager said I'm going to talk to DeMarcus just how I talked to all the other guys yeah same exact way he's like I used to coach I coached Rudy for a little bit I coached Costa I talked to them already but with DeMarcus yeah same thing so after the press conference we had a chance to kind of catch up with him too and people asked about what types of expectations he has for this Sacramento Kings team you know as coaches we always want to keep the expectations too low management always sets the what we think is the expectations too high and then everybody tries to figure it out but uh, yeah, it's difficult to say, especially in the West. You know, I thought in the West this year, you looked at a couple teams that had tough years that I think are going to be making a playoff run next year. Uh, Minnesota, Utah, perhaps New Orleans with the injuries that all those teams had. So, uh, you know, we, that's the group that we hope to be in as that kind of uh, us four teams, hopefully. And you know, you've got a, a Denver team that's kind of figuring out as that group is kind of moving up. And so how long is it going to take or what's it going to look like? Uh, I don't know. I, and, I, and I think our, our roster is a bit fluid, too, uh, with some of the options uh, that different guys have and um, the opportunities that we have in front of us uh, at the draft. And, and Lottie's aggressive. I love it. Uh, he wants to he wants to do some things. And, and uh, I'm, I'm excited for what we can do. Here. What do you think? So there you go. There's Dave Yeager talking there. Um, another thing he said during the press conference that I really like, someone asked him about, you know, hey, what kind of style do you want to play? I mean, he talked about the defense, of course, but yeah. he wasn't going – he, he was saying, listen, we got to see where the roster goes. And I love that because what did we say prior to the search? The best coaches adapt to the pieces that they have on the team. Yeah, right now, they Jaeger may play a certain style with the team that they have now, but they're going to be making some moves this uh, offseason. So I'm curious to see what that style is, and that really depends on what kind of players that Vlade and Jaeger want. They're going to be in this together. That's the one thing that you heard a lot. They're in this together. Right. He he, he mentioned, Jaeger said, listen, there's not going to be any leaks or cracks. I'm not going to be talking to someone about Vladi. Vladi's not going to talk to someone about me. Like, we're in this together, and we have to stay together. And one other note I wanted to bring up, Vivek Ranadive was not there right. at, that, at that press conference. And that says to me, again, 
Vladi's running the basketball side. Vladi made this decision to hire Dave Yeager. I want to go back to yes, a sentence that you said in there, adapting in Doug Christie. We just talked about it with Doug Christie. Adaptability. He said, you know, about Dave Yeager and him being basically being able to adapt to anything, to any players that were thrown at him, to any situations, to how many different starting lineups did oh he have God. to go through last He went through 28 players last year with right, Memphis. Right, right. And so he was able to adapt and adjust, and he did so much with what he had. So to see what the Kings yeah. have now, you know, I, I don't expect the Kings to – succeed with this roster that they have oh, yeah. right and now they're not going to have this roster absolutely so it's a wait and see thing right so it's a wait and see thing so i'm excited to see but hey i'm also excited because he did say something about willie call sign too he was he was you know just like he hey, loves willie i really think yeah. that was a great pick and and he's excited to work with him as well and i think Willie with that defensive mind as well and that hustle and that heart, that will be that will be a great connection right there. What does a national media feel about this hire? Zach Lowe's a guy who's been very critical yes. of the Kings in the past. We'll get to what he said in just a second, but Dave Yeager talked about he and uh, Vlade and everyone's in this together. Well, I think I think we can grow. Uh, there's there's room for growth here. Um, there's flexibility. It, it, I think we're down one one pick going forward, but um, there's some flexibility here with the roster. Uh, there's salary cap space and you know, we talked about going through all of this together uh, as a group, um, but also, and I've known Vladi a little bit in, in the past. We're gonna have fun doing it. Like, there, to do it together, it is special. Um, going to work every day and and knowing that you're gonna be on the same page. You might disagree, you might agree, but you walk out of there arm in arm, and there's there's gonna be no there's gonna be no chinks in the in the army. So there you go. That's good to hear. One thing I I think people fans should know. What. You're hearing a lot from Dave Yeager today because it's a press conference. Mm -hmm. Come the start of the season, there's going to be a wall up a little bit. Not with him and the fans, but sure. him and the media. He's not the most media friendly guy. And I, listen, we're in the media. I don't care about that stuff right. because ultimately, get wins. I, you, you can have the, the most talkative coach on the planet. Like George Carl is a joy to talk to. Honestly, yeah. I like talking to him. Agreed. But breaking news i like to see winning basketball so i could have dave yeager not have the best relationship with the media or maybe not the, that's not the right word maybe not be as open with the media sure if they're winning games i don't care right. about that stuff right you know, you know what be uh, the, per the person you think about is greg popovich who you know have a good question and he'll answer it and everything and i know he's not i know dave yeager is not a greg popovich in any way but the point is with that whole keeping your wall up because yeah. you don't want to show all your cards. You don't want to share everything with the media or with people to write, especially with this organization that's been such a cluster yeah. for so long. It's like things need to stay within the organization. Things don't need to come out of everyone's mouth. He was also asked about that emotional press conference, the one that you made fun of him for, you know, when he was crying. You made fun of him for it. You said, why is everyone crying these days? Well, it, it was after Memphis got eliminated yep. in four games by the San Antonio Spurs in the playoffs. And afterwards, I'll play the sound right now. <laughs> we just won. It was so cool. Something like that, right? No, I'm just kidding. I Hey, I have said, Morgan. Dave Yeager, I, I hope I you're listening. <laughs> hope you're listening. I am kidding. I have said that. I like that. Stuff. I've said I did like that because his players. You, like, it, so anyway, here's yes. what Dave Yeager had to say. He was asked about that press conference. Those guys fought, and I fought for them. And a lot of that stuff is always behind closed doors. You know what I mean? Uh, we give you guys a lot of cliches, and you know you probably get to see like 3% of what's going on, and it ticks you off that people don't say real things. But it just is what it is. And so everything that was behind closed doors that we went through together in the in the belief of what we were trying to get get into the playoffs, win as many games as we could, and how we got there that was that was ridiculous. We went to Cleveland on the second of back to back. They were sitting there waiting for us. We got to win with eight guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that that's that just doesn't happen if it, if you don't have special people and and you're not doing it together. And those are very rewarding times. And so I, I was just really really proud of especially the, the veteran guys um you know tony and zach hung in there and fought and and matt and vince what they did at the end of that game was just a summation of their leadership of what they had provided um throughout the course of after the all-star break and then mark and mike were always pushing even though they weren't able to put on a uniform so really really cool i'm not going to sit here and say he's going to get along with uh demarcus cousin cousins this is going to be great but seriously hearing his relationship with these guys yeah and his connection with these guys even if even if maybe the guys don't feel the same way but they have this mutual respect of him just even as a coach and not as a friend i'm okay with that i love it 
I'm very curious to see how it plays out. I got. Right? I know. I got to keep my. No, hey, listen. Woo. I got to be honest. After hearing his press conference and watching some things, I do feel even better about the hire. And then what some of the national media guys are saying. A lot of people like the move. Zach Lowe is one of my favorite writers. Right. I think he does a great job. He does a great job on the Low Post podcast as well. He wrote this about Dave Yeager saying, Yeager can coach. He's an X's and O's whiz. I want to be an X's and O's whiz. That's pretty cool. Never Who can be. rattle off the play calls of every team with zero notice. He draws up a nice out of timeout set. He can go adjustment for adjustment with almost anyone. He rejiggered defensive matchups in optimal ways during several playoff series. It was one of the first coaches to try uh, snuffling the Curry Green pick and roll by slotting a wing player on Green. Mm -hmm. Jaeger helped set the template, now common, for encroaching further and further off of OKC's role players to uh, strangle the paint and smother OKC's stars. So that's very encouraging. Um, he goes on to say this. It's something of a mystery what Jaeger might do with more of a modern team. His attempted reconstructions in Memphis never stuck, including moving Randolph to the bench midseason or whether the Kings will provide him with such a team. Uh, Lowe goes on the right. Letting Jaeger coach the way he wants would be a good start along the path. Ditto for giving Ken Catanella a real voice in personnel decisions. The biggest question re re resolves around potentially trading Cousins for a bounty, effectively rebooting the roster, but that chatter is quiet of late. The Kings should see if Jaeger can bring out the best in him in both ends, as Malone did before they fired him. Bottom line, we know less about coaches than we think. What we know about Jaeger suggests he has grown quickly into a good one, and he was perhaps the very best hire Sacramento could have made. So there you go. See, the national media doesn't hate Sacramento. And you know what's funny? The piece is even so much longer than oh, that. Yeah, yeah. And the whole piece is that great, though. Yep. It's written just like that. He, Zach Lowe, you're amazing. But <laughs> I love, I love that he, even what he's writing about Jaeger and Cousins, and you know, obviously what Malone did with Cousins, and he was the only coach to do what he did with Cousins within these years and so it's like are we going to see that this upcoming year you know Velade did say after the press conference that Demarcus Cousins will not be traded this year is he just telling the media that you know just I mean not just telling the media that but is he also just saying that you know just so there's confidence in sure. what they have right now and what they want to do sure maybe but either way I, I'm okay with it Hey, we appreciate everyone commenting on the YouTube chat. We do see all the comments, and we do appreciate all of them. We'll have Truth or Trash coming up in just a few minutes. Woo! Yes, the return of Truth or Trash. What an episode. We've had Doug Christie. Yeah. We're talking Jaeger. We got some great sound from after Jaeger's press conference. And now we got Truth or Trash in a few minutes. But first, got to get to Bryce Harper. And we have a new banner, but go we on. We do. <laughs> the podcast the listeners who listen on like iTunes and Stitcher <clears throat> and Google Play, like, we don't care about your stupid banner, but the YouTube live crowd, yeah. You like it. Um, let's talk about Bryce Harper. All yeah, right. Turd. He's a guy that before the season says, ah, he, the game's too boring. We're going to add some excitement. Well, mm -hmm. he did add some excitement last night. Remember, he got tossed from that game. He's been <sighs> chirping at the umpire all night long. He gets tossed. And then, hey, next batter hits a home run and the Nationals win it. The Nationals win it. And Bryce Harper, who, by the way, got tossed. He should be in the clubhouse. He's right. Came onto the field to celebrate. <laughs> He was jumping, oh. and then he approached the home plate umpire. And what did he say, Deuce? He said "f you." And the part that didn't get bleeped out, he said something that I think Rajon Rondo said to an official in Mexico City. Did they confirm? No, that's that? not confirmed. I'm just I'm reading lips here. Right. The the point is, he said "f you." We know that, okay. And let's be honest, Bryce Harper didn't exactly deny it after the game. Our um, cameras, you know, we were here tonight caught you on the field after the game yelling something yeah, at absolutely. yeah the I think uh I was pretty upset you know I don't think uh you know I was right to even do that so um you know let him let him hear what the, you know I have to say and you know let him hear it again and you know so what would you say after the game a couple choice words absolutely <laughs> you said so, you might get fined if I do I do I'll pay it so I think he deserves to you know maybe he'll get fined too so we'll see huh 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 I, Bryce Harper, I know you spend like six hours on doing your hair before every game, <laughs> but seriously, you got to be more respectful. I mean, if you love your game this much, yeah. you cannot treat officials like this. I know, trust me, I know officials and umpires, are they're so hard sometimes to respect and sometimes they are going after you. It doesn't matter. What he said last night was ridiculous. It was just, you know, your team just won. Right. Like, don't, 
to me, you don't take, take attention. Away. You don't take away from your team's moment. Like, yeah, you jumped around with them after, but you had to make, you're on camera. You know, in that moment, the cameras are going to be on you guys celebrating. So the last thing you want to do is do something stupid like that to an umpire. There's just no point. Like, to me, what's the game? I don't care how frustrated you are now. That's the story. You look at Bryce Harper right now. That's what everyone's talking about. There was another story yesterday. That's what I was going to talk about. That he gave like a, a homeless woman a jar of money. Yep. I don't know where he got the jar from. It I don't know how much money it was. Before the game. I mean, the story was put out, you know, just yeah. hours the same day. And then, you know, later that day, he's screaming off F you. <laughs> it's like, yeah. dude, you know, I, I understand you can do good things. You have money to do these things. But you still got to respect people. And maybe he's frustrated because everyone's just walking him all the time now. Like the Cubs over the weekend walked him like 800 times. And he's like, I just want to play baseball. But it doesn't, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He shouldn't be doing that. And I don't think mm. that's not too much to ask Bryce. Just say, maybe just tone it down a little bit, huh? Or, or shut the hell up. Don't yeah. say that at all. Get the hell back in the clubhouse. You were thrown out. Hey, one last story yes. I wanted to get to, of course. So Dak Prescott, the... Um, new quarterback for the Cowboys yeah yeah, that they drafted he had some things to say about Tony Romo in the past like mm -hmm. years ago this is like the new thing on Twitter where a player gets drafted and someone digs up tweets that they possibly said about their new team like uh -huh. Larry Nance Jr. said some things about Kobe being a rapist yep and then he is on the Lakers yep uh, Prescott did something similar and he had a comment about it he said you know I was a frustrated fan at the time I'm sure you can go back and look at the fans of Mississippi State and they may have said some some uh things similar at one point or another so I was just being a fan and now he's my teammate and I'm behind him 100 percent I'm going to let him bring it up I I think it's funny I'm sure he thinks it's funny do I you, think he's hoping do you know <laughs> the exact tweet it was uh, no. It was just okay. Yeah, I mean, he's just calling Tony Romo out. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's it's one of those things. Like, like he said, he's just being honest. He was a fan. He bashed him on Twitter. But this is also why you don't bash people on Twitter. Like, even even for anybody, you yeah. never know who you're going to run into, well, who you're going to work with. That's a great point because there, I've had a couple instances now hmm. that have like backfired on me. I've never been a big Rondo guy. What do they do? The Kings do? They sign Rondo. I have for a long time, well, before he came to Sacramento, Ryan Hollins. I called oh, him many times on Twitter and on air a fake tough guy. Yep. And then, of course, he signs with the Kings, and I'm interviewing him. And, and you said it to his face, though. You said how you felt. You're like, dude, I used to call you a fake <laughs> tough guy, and that's how I felt. So how do you feel about yeah. that? Please don't kill me. And then here I am like a week and a half ago, maybe mocking Dave Yeager, crying right. after the game. And then the Kings hire him, so I just need to stop doing that. You huh? need to shut your stupid face. Seriously, you need to. You need. You need. <laughs> I some help. swear to you, if they sign Matt Barnes, no, that I, that one, that one, I don't care. I like even if there was interviews in the locker room, I would never go to Matt Barnes. I just think that is someone who is just so disrespectful to so many people, and just even to Sacramento and to their fans. No, thank you. Are you there. ready for a Tuesday special of? It's time for truth or trash, 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 trash. We do it every Tuesday. It's pretty simple. We got statements. We say if it's truth or trash. You can submit your own on the YouTube live chat. You can always email them later, too. Yeah. Just go to DaveDeuceMason.com or MorganReagan.com. Click on contact. You can email us. Send us whatever. All right. We'll respond. First off on truth or trash. Are you ready? Are you focused? Are you ready? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Truth or trash, Morgan? The Kings are a better team today than they were last year. That has got to be trash, Deuce. Why? What changes have they really made except they got with a new the coach? Head coach? Their other coach. Wait, didn't how like about you the keep players. interrupting? This is—is is this how truth or trash goes? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Thanks. So anyway, I said trash because you know they have a new head coach. Sure, you can already say from there they could be a better team, but we don't know. We do not know. So no, I'm not going to sit here today and say that they're a better team. I'll say trash as well. That's they're in the, going in the right direction. I think they've got the guy that could get them going in that right direction. But now it's about getting other pieces. You know, what are you going to do with Rondo? I say don't re-sign him. Please do not give Rondo big money. Agreed. Please. I am begging you. Do not give him like $15 million per. Um, I'm optimistic. I'm not okay. going to say they're a better team today. Right. Today. That was the truth of trash. So today. Today. Truth. Or trash. The Kings made the right move by hiring Dave Yeager. This one can come back to bite me in a couple of years, but as of right now, today, I'm going to say truth. You look at the names out right. there, 
it's tough to find one that you think is better than Jaeger. Like, sure. I like Frank Vogel. They didn't interview Frank Vogel. Out of mm -hmm. all the guys they interviewed, yeah, he's at the top or near the top. I think they got the best guy. From all the guys they interviewed, they got the best guy. I was big on Itori Messina. They didn't talk to him, so I'm not including him. I'm talking about the guys they talked to. Yes, he made the right move. And I'll say truth as well. There could be guys like Messina that, you know, I wish I could have seen, like, become and evolve as his head coach in the NBA here. But with Dave Yeager, I'm not, I'm not mad about it, and I'm optimistic, and I'm feeling positive about it. All right. <laughs> all right. Morgan, truth or trash, Steph Curry's overtime performance was the best you've ever witnessed. I'm going to say truth because the feelings I feel from last night, that sounds weird. The feelings I feel from last night's game, it's just, I mean, how fun was that? And that I've witnessed in my lifetime, I know there's a few other games probably, but that is going to be mine, truth. I'm going to say truth as well. And it was oh. a tough one because... We witnessed LeBron James in 2007 against the Pistons in the playoffs. He scored 25 straight points in 29 of the team's final 30 mm -hmm. points. It's ridiculous. There's other games that come to mind. The other one, seriously, that pops into mind happened against the Kings when Clay Thompson scored 37 in a quarter. Are you bleeping me? But why I think this is the best, why I even think this is better than Clay's, is because Clay did it against a bad Kings team. Right. Okay? It's still amazing. I'm not taking anything away, but Steph was coming off an injury he was supposed to play 25 to like 28 minutes and he dropped 40 plus points yep. right or 40 something points yep he had 17 in overtime like that is ridiculous he's coming off a huge layoff you expect guys to be rusty like if Steph Curry came back last night at 17 points and struggled like no one was going to be like oh or they wouldn't be worried about it no they would say oh he's you know he's got some rust to work up there was no rust it was like a little bit of time he he's he of course he started what over nine for right point land. he was slow but that was it most guys have to it takes them a game or two to get back after an injury there was no layoff that's why it was the most uh impressive performance I've ever witnessed Truth or trash, deuce. A's fans should be concerned about Sonny Gray's start to the season. Yeah, I'm going to say truth on that. I'm a little concerned. Really? I mean, I don't think anyone expected us to be in May and talking about Sonny, Sonny Gray with an ERA over six. Now, he says he's healthy. Mm -hmm. He is. Maybe a couple tweaks, it'll be fine. But these numbers, over his past three starts, he's allowed 18 runs, all earned in 122 and 30, or uh, 122. Uh, God, I can't even read. You know what I'm trying to say. He has struggled a little bit. I was going to say 122 and a third. That makes no, no sense. No, I get what you're saying. 12 and two thirds. There you go. So uh, my, my point is I am a little concerned because it shouldn't be that after what we've seen from him. He's been so reliable over the last couple of years. I don't expect out of him. And I have to say trash because that's exactly it. He has been so re reliable. He yeah. has been so consistent for so long. He's never seen himself play like this so he kind of has to go the go through these yeah. struggles figure it out for himself and he will figure it out i mean i'm not going to sit here and say it's early i hate yeah. when people say it's early deuce but no he hasn't been through these struggles but he's going to figure out these struggles and he's going to be just fine ace fans don't worry all right the last one on truth or trash bryce harper deserves to be suspended for what he did after the game last night you know what truth what? and i want to just say fine him but like honestly money doesn't seem to affect him like okay. he even said that in the post game press conference and so it just comes down to it. Players should it should not be okay to be able to do that. And plus, like he's like we said, he he should have been in the clubhouse. Yep. Why is that allowed for him to come running out? Doesn't matter. Yes, he should be suspended. Give him a one game suspension. I'm okay. with you, and that's because it's, it would be like this: uh, Demarcus Cousins gets ejected from a game, and Darren Collison hits a game winner, and then Cousins runs out onto the court yeah. to celebrate with his team. You're not allowed to do it. You got ejected from the game. Right. It's the same thing in baseball. You go to the clubhouse. You don't come back out and then do what he did. Scream F you? Yeah, no. like, no, you are suspended for one game. Go do your hair, kid. Lose a paycheck. Do yeah. your hair. He's got nice hair, though. It's a little greasy. All right, that's how we do Truth or Trash here on the Deuce and Mo podcast. Morgan, I've got a stat that I saw right before the show that may blow your mind. Stat of the day nominee? It, no, I'm going to go ahead and say right now, stat of the day winner. Oh. This is from Tom Ziller. Okay. My guy, Tom Ziller, SB Nation. Your I guy. read this today. It was in a piece about you know Vogel and Jaeger and all the coaches out there. 
The last six official full-time Kings head coaches, not talking about the interim guys, okay? okay. The full-time coaches averaged 119 games before getting fired. There's 82 games in a season. So the last six full-time Sacramento Kings head coaches, not interims, averaged 119 games before getting fired. That's the stab of day winner. How unbelievable is that? Like My when you see that number. Dropped. Yeah. My stomach dropped. That's terrible. So the question is, <laughs> over under 119 games for Dave Yeager as Kings head coach. Over. I'm with you. Yeah. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a good, interesting time for yeah. the Sacramento Kings. I'm excited to see what's ahead. But you know what? I'm glad that now everyone has been through so much lately, Kings fans wise, and I feel like even media wise, everyone's expectations are are low. I think Dave Yeager lowered. I, I think some fans are actually okay. really high. You know what I mean? Like sure. Yes, it, I'll it, say lower. I think you're so, right. Fans expectations were so out of whack when they hired George Carl yeah. because of his resume. That was ridiculous. And I think now they like the move, but a lot of them have lowered the expectations. Right. right. Go go have your Jaeger bomb if you need to, but um but yes, have your expectations lowered, but be excited for this new season going into the new arena with a new head coach. Hey, we got Spurs OKC tonight, San Antonio. That series is tied up at two apiece. Who you got? I I'm gonna go with the Spurs. They're gonna adjust, they're gonna figure it out. Yeah, I got the Spurs as well. We'll be back tomorrow. Big show, of course, on YouTube Live. Thanks so much for everyone watching and listening to us. We can't thank you enough for the sport. Seriously, you guys. I'm not kidding you. You guys are the best. Can I say one yeah. thing that's like kind of corny and cheesy? Well, weird? Um, seriously, I have so much fun doing this, and uh, I have so much I'm fun interacting the music with people, dramatic. and I have so much fun talking to Doug. It was so much fun. Thank you, everyone. That was it? Um, yeah. I thought you were going to be more emotional. No, I just wanted... I, yeah, I thought you were going to go I Jaeger on us. No, I just have so much fun. I just love you guys so much. Can we say that from now on when someone cries? Yes. Says, hey, they went Jaeger. I just love you all so much, and I have so much fun, and I have all your backs. I didn't... I'm playing this, but... uh, yeah, I just love you guys, and... I mean, it's just amazing. It's Get just out amazing. of here. Okay, seriously... Thumbs up on Jaeger. Yep. Thumbs up on Doug Christie joining us. And, yes. Uh, thumbs up on Steph Curry. Ridiculous. Yep. Anyway, uh, we can't thank you enough for uh, listening. As we mentioned, uh, communicate with us on Twitter at Deuce Mason at Momo Reagan. You could also find us on our websites. Check out DaveDeuceMason.com or MorganReagan.com. There you can find out podcasts. Hey, you can subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. We're everywhere. Everywhere. And you can contact us via email there. Yes, it's that please simple. Do. We Seriously. love writing back. We will be back tomorrow afternoon live. And of course, you can find us. You know where to find us. Thanks so much for listening. We got to go. Bye. Bye. I got to go.